This is Rin, and she got some devil wings but don't be fooled, she's an intern for the job of Master Slurpee Drinker. And on her first day, she received a sussy glowing red ball from her boss as a reward for having good grades. Now here's the thing, this isn't no ordinary marble, as this is actually her source of power to make sure she can deliver the goods during her sussy back of jobs as a master slurpee drinker trainee. Regardless, fast forward to her first target on the job, she's tasked to gank a Roblox player named Hojin as bro has been playing too much video games at night. As such, she sneaks inside his house by cosplaying Santa, and while using his skill called Ghost Walk Through the Wall, Rin is able to make it right before an unsuspecting and sleeping Hojin. However, after some time staring at Hojin, it finally dawns on her that she has no idea on what to do next, as she's literally level zero in this department, and it's still her first day. Now the only thing she knows is she needs to surprise Gank Hojin's banana tree plantation, which should allow her to steal his soul. And if done properly, she's able to successfully complete her first job. Nevertheless, with time ticking as night falls, Rin decides to hop on Mount Hojin to see if the roller coaster could get up and running, without her having to do much. Unfortunately for both of them, Mount Hojin is still fast asleep even with rice cakes right on top the banana tree plantation, as Bro is still busy dreaming about gaming like a savage. As such, Rin decides it's time to use some of her newfound powers as surely nothing could go wrong. So she whicks out some red-looking dragon balls and places it near Hojin where it begins to glow. It's then revealed that Rin's plan is to make Hojin smell the scent of sussy strawberry from this mysterious red marble look-alike as it should wake him up in no time. But just as she expected, our boy still continued to dream about video games, and instead, our boy's banana tree plantation started to have a growth spurt out of nowhere, which totally reversed Gang's Rin. Now the funny thing is that Hojin has started to look like he's dreaming about playing some dating sim games, and unbeknownst to him, the best female character is literally right in front of him. Anyways, as he dreams about getting to the final cutscene of his dating sim game, which allows him to whip out his dried mango sword, he does the exact same motions in real life, causing him to unknowingly reveal his volcano. Nonetheless, Rin starts to think her powers are actually working as our sleeping boy is ready for his mega adventure quest, so she decides to fully activate the legendary abilities of the mysterious marble. To do so, she starts channeling her inner demon princess skills, and as she does so with the marble in front of Hojin, a red aura begins to engulf her. As Rin continues to charge on forward with her magic marble abilities, our boy ends up waking up totally confused, and the first thing he sees as he opens his eyes is a QB looking like she's perfectly from those very cool and great anime, where men's volcanoes explode thanks to her. But since Rin's target is now awake, she gets startled by his movement, causing her to drop the mysterious marble, allowing Hojin to accidentally eat Rin's overwhelming powers whole, just like some kind of double Big Mac. It was at this very moment she knew she screwed up, so both of them end up freezing like a bunch of Eskimos from up north in the land of the new American state called Canada. Regardless, Rin's mistake forces her to urge Hojin to run to the bathroom in an attempt to retrieve through some unconventional means to no avail. After a very long time and multiple tries in getting the alien marble out of his system, he decides to just leave the bathroom and accept his fate as there's no way he can retrieve it as he can only hope that maybe some Dairy Queen ice cream can help him as he's absolutely lactose. With the sad news finally arriving through Rin's head that he wasn't able to retrieve her powers, she begins to panic deep down as she can't believe she totally screwed up her first day on the job and her mistake was enormous, even larger than Hojin's banana tree. However, as things look bleak for Rin, Hojin pipes up like a true Chad and tells her that since she's a devil slurpy princess, she probably doesn't even need the marble to win over dude since he claims that her physical form is literally 69 out of 10. Unfortunately for Rin, she reveals to Hojin that even though she's a devil princess, she's still technically an intern, and she needs the marble to activate her powers until she's able to get promoted by completing her license. Hojin also discovers that not only is this her first ever assignment, but this is also her first time venturing out of her world, and her first time even seeing a man in real life. So now Rin stays on the ground and begins to slowly cry as she knows she can't go back to her world without the marble, and without her mission completed, so she's stuck in the human world. Luckily for her though, Hojin decides to help her out the best he can so he allows her to stay at his apartment while she figures things out. But for the meantime, he needs to head out to go to school. Fast forward a few moments later, our boy makes it to school and he starts thinking to himself that maybe he's going crazy as he can't fathom his experience with a devil princess literally an hour before. Nevertheless, as he continues on recollecting what just happened during the night, he heads to his first class, but he accidentally tries to open the door at the same time with the most popular girl at school, causing both their hands to make contact. 
The girl's name is Dayom, and she just happens to be every guy's crush at school, including his, so he instantly gets flustered and tries to apologize, but no words is able to come out of his mouth as his simp powers come out in full force. Eventually, she interrupts the awkwardness and tells our boy to stop spacing out, and for the first time ever, she ends up remembering his name and notices Hojin. Things then get more out of the ordinary for Hojin, as Dayong randomly asks our boy if he could help her after class to organize some things, so it seems like things are about to get more heated than the out-of-flames Miami heat. Then, as time passes by, no one else comes to class for some mysterious reason, leaving the two alone inside the classroom, but both of them start to get engulfed by a red aura. With the two already waiting over half an hour in class with no professor arriving, Hojin finally pipes up and kindly asks Dayong if she received any sudden announcements to why no one decided to come today. However, Dayong Misuna's twin sister from Sussy Art Online quickly changes her aloof demeanor as she gets ganked by our boy's question, so she is flustered out of nowhere just from Hojin talking to her. Luckily for her though, Hojin doesn't notice the difference in her usual behavior, so he tells her that he's going to leave and ask the department office to see what's going on. As such, our boy continues on his quest to find out what the heck is going on, but just as he's about to leave the room, Dayong's body randomly forces her to get up as her heart starts to race. Things then instantly go from 0 to 69 faster than my instant cup noodles, as Dayong is unable to get Hojin out of her mind, even entering the point of her no return as she finds out her secret catacombs have started to leak fresh coconut juice. She then decides to block Hojin's path out of the room, making sure he isn't able to easily leave as it looks like something has overtaken her mind. Mere seconds later, she jet dashes towards Hojin to make contact for her team, but her team failed her again as she's the only one to entry with no follow-up. Of course, our boy gets flustered as he's never imagined that his favorite streamer would ever notice him, nor would he have expected a girl take note of his measly Amazon Prime sub. Anyways, Hojin freezes in disbelief as he goes with the flow as Dayong decides to debuff his movement speed by totally unlocking his banana tree plantation as she's able to remove all stats from his armor pants by throwing them out to the side. Moments later, she starts devouring the crazy banana split she just uncovered within the room, but if you look closely, Dayong kind of looks like Taiga from Toradora from this angle, but she ain't that short as her. So now as Dayong starts having dessert before the main course, she continues to go more crazy than Messi signing up for Inter Miami as she's trying her best to make sure Volcano Hojin explodes. Speaking of Hojin, Bro just stands there like he's doing the mannequin challenge on maximum difficulty, where if he makes any move, he knows he will lose concentration and his science experiment of his untamed volcano will erupt all over. Eventually, the volcano explodes and Hojin's science experiment loses for the first time ever, but as he does so, he made sure Dayong finished up every drop of the special banana split flavored ice cream. Shortly after completion of her side quest, Dayong snaps back to reality and is totally confused to what the heck is going on as she finds herself by the ground while facing Hojin's freshly juiced banana trees out in the wild. As such, she swiftly gets up and starts yelling at our boy, ordering him to forget whatever just happened as she claims aliens have taken over her mind for that brief moment. But right before Hojin could reply back with anything, Dayong grabs all her belongings and speeds off into the sunset and out of the classroom faster than my gas, leaving our boy totally speechless. Regardless, Hojin heads back home after school still shocked that to this day he can't ever figure out why girls keep sending him mixed signals, especially if the girl is the one to make the first move. He then tries to shake it off as he attempts to convince himself that girls make sure you never know their next move, so maybe Dayong was just pulling off a just a prank bro moment. Anyways, after an eternity, our boy finally makes it home but now finds himself in dismay and angry that he almost got fooled into thinking Dayong could ever like him. Hoja then rushes off to his bedroom, but just as he was about ready to relieve all of his stress through one simple trick, he stumbles upon Rin from last night as he totally forgot about her. However, as he stands over her wondering what to do, Rin notices his presence and wakes up and proceeds to throw him to the ground, where she pins him to ask if he's finally come to give over his soul to her. Mere seconds later, she channels her innocent princess self and proceeds to swap mouth water relentlessly causing Hojin to stop her in her tracks as he likes no more surprises. However, the turntables turn, as Rin instantly apologizes for doing the reckless show of emotion as she just realized something otherworldly has overtaken her senses at that brief moment, so she couldn't help herself but attack. Just as she finished apologizing, it finally dawned on her that whatever just happened to her is literally her own power, so she starts freaking out and asked our boy if something peculiar happened to him while he was out and about. As such, Hojin decides to reveal what happened to him earlier during the day, explaining in full detail what Dayong did to him while no one else showed up to his first class. 
After finishing up his story, Rin's theory is proved to be correct, so she tells Hojin that the mysterious marble is using his scent which could also lead to the marble taking over his body. With our boy acting totally aloof, Rin pipes up and sternly warns him that he basically stole her powers, so now he needs to watch his back as every girl in college will start to hunt him down, due to him being the only meat they want during unlimited Chinese hot pot. However, with Hojin trying to play off his earlier encounter with Daeyong slurping his ice cream is nothing, he tells Rin that nothing out of the usual happened to him today, but we all know bro ain't usually the Wizard of Oz. Regardless, Rin can see through his charade and choose him out for not heeding her warning. Plus, she's still shocked that she can still feel the power of the marble affecting her. Rin then continues and informs him that if they don't find a way to retrieve the marble, then she won't be able to collect his soul, leading to her inevitable death that will cause ripples in the entire human and devil realms. So now, with only one option seemingly left for Rin, she ends up telling Hojin that it's unfortunate she needs to end the mess with him, causing our boy to get up defensively, wondering what she means. Our boy then finds out exactly what she meant mere seconds later, as Rin transforms into her menacingly devil form, sending Hojin flying straight into the underground of his floor. But right before Hojin turned into Baijin, Rin apologizes for having to do this, claiming that it's better for a single Roblox player to perish, rather than having the entire human realm facing ultimate disaster. Bro then tries to run away while Rin closes the gap, but his body is unable to move due to her powers, so Rin lets her Earth buddy know that she's going to make it quick for him. However, literally one second before Rin could personally activate her manual soul extraction skills, the two get interrupted by a Ding Dong ringing his doorbell. As such, Rin stops in her tracks as this was unexpected due to this guy never ever getting any visitors, so she orders him to go grab the door. She then warns Hojin that if Bro did anything sus or suspicious at all, then she will John Cena both him and whoever the person is at the door. But then, much to everyone's surprise including mine, the sussy turn tables instantly turn as the visitor happens to be none other than super popular Daeyoung. It's then revealed that Daeyoung never knew his address, but she lets her boy know that she was being stalker and successfully figured out his address all on her own. Anyways, that's not totally weird at all since she's a girl, but Daeyoung ends up asking if she could enter as she wants to talk about what happened earlier. Nonetheless, Bro hesitates for one second while staring at her as he has no clue on what to do, so Hojin just replies with uh, causing Daeyoung to activate her Tsundere abilities and yells at him that they can talk right here as well and it'll be absolutely fine. Hojin then tries to make an excuse claiming that he's hesitant because his room is dirty and unclean right now, but Daeyoung tells him she doesn't care at all. But here's the thing man, Bro is just trying to save his crush from her demise due to Rin waiting in the background, but now it looks like he's getting cornered like a rat in New York City. Nevertheless, Daeyoung looks like a type of girl that has never received a no in her life, so she decides to use her skill, enlarge double Big Macs and proceeds to use them to press against our boy wanting to really talk. It was then, at this very moment, our boy knew he screwed up as he easily gets defeated by Daeyoung's chest plate that causes him to want to risk it all a second time. Luckily for Hojin though, he's able to snap back to reality and attempts to push Daeyoung away, but then Bro forgot about his powers so his devil fruit activates without him knowing. With his mythical fruit now in action, Daeyoung begins to stumble upon her words, unable to coherently string together a full sentence, so she ends up just mumbling um. At the same time, Rin decides to take a popping swing around Hojin's shoulder, taking a peek herself wondering what's taking so long. Our boy then panics when he realizes Rin is standing right behind him, but she unsuspectingly invites Daeyoung in if she wants to talk whilst having no armor pants equipped. Coincidentally, at the sight of Rin wearing the attire of a girl that looks like they just got rice cakes smashed seconds before, Daeyoung ends up angrily squeezing her dragon skirt from the side, looking like she got hit by the jealous love bug. Suddenly, Daeyoung sighs out loud and tells our boy that she was expecting to spend some quality time with him after going through all the trouble of stalking him, but she's going to go on her way. Shortly after making her disappointed spiel, she frustratedly stomps away out of his apartment, making so much sound that all of his neighbors from every floor is probably going to make a noise complaint. With Daeyoung now gone from the vicinity, the door slams close right in front of him, but we all know he's secretly crying inside after missing a major opportunity. Regardless, Hojin turns back around ready for round two of his devil versus human battle, so he ends up asking how the heck she's able to quickly transform into a human. Rin then pipes up looking more lively and nice than usual, where she explains to Hojin that she has a plan that could work to allow them both to peacefully coexist, and all Bro has to do is to do her job instead by extracting souls for her. Our boy then begins to sweat profusely as mere moments before she was about to end his Roblox career and now she seemingly wants to be his best friend so Hojin thinks this is just a prank bro. 
Regardless, Rin tells him that she noticed the sus way he looked at Daeyoung earlier since bro is a mega sussy baka. So she knew right there and then that the marble would activate as his banana tree plantation was growing faster than usual. She then continues on and explains that her theory is that the marble's power must be connected to his emotions and not his physical proximity to a girl. As such, Rin points at his face and informs him that this is good news as he doesn't need to get clapped anymore, and we all know the marble's powers work as Daeyoung literally found out where he lived. Furthermore, Rin makes the great point of how Bro would never have been able to bag someone as pretty as Daeyoung, as he's totally out of her league, so this situation is a win-win scenario. Our boy gets to win over and date any girl he wants, allowing him to get out of his gaming misery and Rin can just go being chilling as she waits for him to give her souls. Of course, our boy instantly accepts her offer as it dawns on him that he can literally go and be the rice cake smashing hero he's always dreamt of, and now it's achievable all thanks to the devil fruit. Fast forward the next day, we find Hojin has eagerly gone to class, totally excited that he can go ahead and win over any 11 out of 10 he sees. However, Hojin starts falling asleep and starts to get sad when class continues on, and Daeyoung seems like she isn't going to show up to school today. Suddenly, as our boy continues to zone in and out of class, his teacher calls him out to start paying attention, but she ain't half bad herself. A long and grueling math class then finishes, so Hojin packs his bags and heads to his next class, but the teacher calls him up to go help her out since he wasn't paying attention in class. Now, since it's clear that this boy rarely ever says no, he accepts so he starts wheeling out a bunch of exam materials with the teacher. But don't be fooled by this angle, as it's revealed the teacher got some badonkadonks. Shortly after making it to her private office with no one around, she ends up blushing and asks if Hojin would love a part-time job with her. But for the first time ever, bro says no. However, to not get punished for refusing her amazing job offer, Hojin turns around and examines a few of her awards to avoid her glare and to also compliment the teacher for her achievements. Nevertheless, with the two alone in the private room, my sussy senses are tingling especially when the teach starts pushing up her badonkadonks in front of our boy. Coincidentally, she makes a remark of how she's 34 now but she's never had any sort of fun and at the same time, sussy Hojin begins to realize that the teach has been packing some large and unused badonkadonks and fresh bakery buns. So now with our boy transforming into his ultimate baker form, his devil fruit activates by covering him with a mysterious red aura, causing his teacher to accidentally get affected. Moments later, the two exit the room, but before Hojin could head on his way, the teacher makes a comment of how she likes meat and offers to pay for dinner if he would like to come with her. And so the two teleport themselves to what looks like delicious Korean BBQ, where the teacher starts telling Hojin more hints about how she's super single and how unlucky she's in blind dating. However, the sussy turntables turn again when our boy tells her that personally he thinks she's super charming so bro is accidentally letting his riz leak causing her to be flustered. But then bro gets stuck in a sticky situation with some double bacon Big Macs in front of him parting ways like the Nile, as she asks him what parts of her he finds charming. But the funny part in all of this is he totally avoids her question and just says that he's single too, and claims he knows she will meet someone decent in the future causing more of his aura to envelope her. Shortly after our boy's devil fruit activates again, Hojin gets ganked by her hand as the teach starts blurting out how cute she thinks he is, and how great he smells because she loves Mr. Spice. Suddenly, as bro blinks once, he finds himself teleported to someone's bed where he's absolutely shocked at what's unraveling before him as he fears having someone ride his bike to the point of no return. First, he couldn't handle Daeyoung slurping his vanilla ice cream, and now his teacher is about to send him into the sussy dimension as she's already unequipped all of her defensive armor. She doesn't stop there though as the teacher ultimately stares our boy down while she puts on the basic Minecraft skin of nothing as his powers were too strong to overcome. Meanwhile, Hojin is left totally perplexed as he never expected to check off his 2023 bingo card of getting better grades by rice cake destroying his teachers. Regardless, our boy gets flustered as his carnival hot dog almost exploded so much ketchup all over the teach due to her thoroughly handling it with care, so he tries his best to not become the infamous one pump man. Eventually, she hops on his mountain bike, ready to speed her way through to the climax of the nearby mountain. But she first makes a remark of how much she's loving everything before the rest was epic rap battles of history. And in less than four seconds from the start of her bike ride journey, his rocket ship explodes in multiple pieces, but the ship forgot to pull out, causing Hojin to look like he just saw the grudge. Luckily for him though, the teacher just smiles as she doesn't care about him finishing the race early, but she's a tad bit disappointed the show is already finished. Elsewhere, back at our boy's apartment, Rin is busy tinkering around with human inventions like the sus pad that Hojin used to use to keep one hand busy and the other browsing. Nevertheless, Rin doesn't mind how dirty the screen is as she's low maintenance, 
but she uses it and successfully learns about the internet and all its wonders. One of the first things she does is look up food videos from the best ever food review show channel, causing her to constantly gush about all the tasty looking human foods. Eventually, Gala, she gets carried away browsing the World Wide Web, she drops the sus pad to think about our boy, wondering if he's busy doing a good job with her task as she still needs some more Dark Souls in her life. Now back to the action with Hojin, we find out that Bro is laying there totally speechless as the Teach decides they need more than one round of intense racing. And so they continue round two as the moon illuminates the night sky, where by this time our boy is able to last more than a few seconds in their race. Moments later, after the volcano of Hojin abruptly erupts straight into the narrow valley of the teacher, we learn that her name is actually June. Fast forward the next morning, June smacks a drooling Hojin awake as it's time for school, so the two get ready right before June wishes our boy a great day, where she also hopes that things won't be awkward between the two from now on. As such, Hojin quickly runs to the grocery and totally skips his first few classes, as Bro is absolutely famished from the night before. However, as our boy stumbles upon his trashed-up apartment with a disheveled Rin laying down right in the middle, he starts scolding her to clean up after herself. Unfortunately for him though, she totally ignores him and grabs his feet, begging our boy to bring her some McDonald's as she's craving a vanilla milkshake, but we all know that Machine is never ever up. 